Parkwood Junior High in Woodland Hills, and I went over and I got an issue of Cine, uh, uh, Cinemagic. Cinemagic. Which you got the mask making issue. Right, number six. But I remember, exactly. But I got the blood formula from Dick Smith, and I can't remember if it was issue four or something, but it, it had the guy with the nose uh, cut off. Okay. And once I got that, I, I was wondering, what was photo flow? Because I never used that. Right, right, right. But uh, So you, was, you never got around to using photo flow? No. No. Well, that's a very toxic chemical. It wasn't, it wasn't, <laughs> that's why. It wasn't meant for actually putting in your mouth. Yeah. Some people confuse that. Can I put that in my mouth? Can I put it in my mouth? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember the days where Morton Greenspoon was the only guy doing lenses? Right. And right. I remember he had done lenses for the man from Atlantis, the mm -hmm. green lenses. And uh, back in those days, cosmetic contact lenses were like 2000 bucks. That's right. 3000 bucks. Right. Unheard of it, you know, changed the color of your eyes. But anyways, I know I went through a lot of phases that alarmed my mother of uh, spurting blood. I went through a deer hunter phase uh -huh. where I would have a tube under a bandana and like a gallon jug and I'd step on it and <clears throat> blood would fly out of my head. When did you first start getting into the blood effects? I think the uh, first time I got into blood effects was the Tom Savannah's Grand Illusion. Sure, sure. I think, had, I, think, I think he may have had a blood formula there, but right. somehow I figured out it was, you know, the corn, carol syrup, corn syrup, right. and food coloring, and uh, once once you figure out the formula, then you have blood. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, my, my parents bought me a video camera in 1982. Sure. And that was the year that uh, video cameras were first introduced to the retail market. Was it VHS or was it, was it beta? It was a VHS. Yeah. It, was a, it was a camcorder where the, the machine, you carried it on, on your side with a with a battery and <laughs> yeah, you the back chart. Right, yeah. exactly. You had the camera there. Right. And as soon as I, I, I the kind of the two went hand in hand, I started photographing blood on camera and shooting home movies right. the same year. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I just remember that like if you didn't clean up carol syrup, corn syrup, it turned into candy, like hard candy, yeah, like on sure. floors, on rocks. Sure. Yeah. This isn't gonna stain my clothes, is it? Yeah. Oh uh, no, I won't stain your clothes. It'll just be uh, yeah. Yeah, preserved forever your clothes, right. Right, exactly. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen. Hey everybody out there, uh, this is Don Lanning, and I just uh, I just had a wonderful experience this week, and I wanted to intro introduce you all to my friend Joe. This is Joe Castro, everybody. Nice to meet you, everybody. Yeah, and we're talking about uh, blood gags from youth, and inspiration. Uh, as uh, special effects artists, we've a lot of us start out doing blood gags. I certainly did, and we never stop. And uh, one of uh, well, Joe called me and said that he wanted to come by and work with me, which I was so thrilled. I've been looking forward to taking this task for about well, a year now. Well, so and our, our, all the stars aligned, and we finally the sir. dates aligned, and we were able to, uh, to absolutely, work, work together in absolutely. He's an established artist, an established effects guy. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have people come in and work with me that are absolute pros, and also beginners. But uh, we just spent forty hours, and on the first day. Uh, Joe came in and showed me this drawing. Do you have it there? Well, it's, a, it's actually, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is where the picture came from. It's Herschel Gordon Lewis and I yeah. together. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was about a decade ago. Right, where's our, there we are. Isn't that great? Well, now, who, who are we talking about here? We're talking about Herschel Gordon Lewis. Yeah, there you go. And here he is here. Wonderful. Now, to do a likeness is probably one of the hardest things you can do. And I love it because I knew it was going to be a challenge, and I love it because the proof is in the pudding. Here we have Herschel, yeah. and I just love that. Uh, now, you knew Herschel, and I want you to spend just a minute and just tell everybody out there about a working with him. Okay, well, I met Herschel in 2001 on the set of a movie titled Blood Feast 2. <laughs> okay. It's called Blood Feast 2, All You Can Eat. And All that, You Can Eat, yeah. uh, That is actually the sequel to the very first slasher movie ever made. Which is? Blood Feast. Blood Feast. And yes. Blood Feast was a movie that Herschel wrote, produced, directed, uh, shot, created all the special effects for, edited, and also made all the uh, blood and gore in the film. I think I covered, I covered everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and Herschel did this movie in Florida back in 1963. And he, 63. 1963, and he established the formula for the slasher movie. So he is literally considered right. in, uh, the godfather of gore. Right. Uh, he first exploited blood in motion picture cinema on the silver screen right. in 1963. Right. Yeah. And well, yeah, it's probably safe to say that he was one of the first guys, if not the first guy, uh, a precursor to Tom Savini. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, it was considered actually pornographic to show right. Right. color red blood 
on a movie cinema right. in a movie theater before right. 1963. He was right. the first one to do it. Right. Yeah. And uh, and you know he he's responsible for the slasher formula, and what that means is I, I, I love I love to say this I love Herschel. Herschel has influenced literally millions of filmmakers all over the world. Uh, Herschel invented the storyline of the slasher film, which is a deranged killer stalks innocent victims one by one, right. killing each victim on screen in like a, like a horrific, gory death. And then at the climax of the movie, the killer dies at the hands of the hero or heroine of the movie in an even more gory, on-screen, horrific death. Sounds like every Friday, the, every slasher movie ever yeah. made. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's his formula. <laughs> okay. so, uh, so he has literally influenced and, and uh, inspired like millions of, of people all over the world. Don't make right. it Tell us something about working with him. I know you got a chance to be on set with him. Tell us about that. that. That's me on set with him. And, uh, you know, Herschel was like really big on making the special effects gory. And, and that meant something to him. Right. You know, pouring blood was, was what I considered what was gory at the time. Right. 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 There was a lot of blood on it, a lot of blood. He goes, no, 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 Joe, that's not gory enough. And then, you know, I'd put a little bit more blood in different areas. He goes, no, 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 Joe, that's not gory enough. Yeah. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He goes, come here. So we took out like a, like a bucket, like a five gallon bucket, and right. we went over to the craft service table, and he put some mashed potatoes from craft service in the bottom of the bucket. He put some chicken skin, chicken and, skin. and gravy, <laughs> and then he put a little bit of blood on top of that. Yeah. And he kind of, he didn't mix it all together, but he kind of mixed it around. He said, now put that on some parts of it. That will make it really disgusting and gory. I love it. I love it. Oh, oh good. I get it now. I get it now. I love so, it. And, and what production was that on? That was for Blood Feast 2. Blood Feast 2. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. So, um, so I, I had the honor and the privilege of creating the special effects for the sequel yeah. for the very first last movie. Yeah. Were, and, he, and the man just literally changed my life. He showed me how to be a gentleman. Yeah. He showed me how to be more professional. And of course, he showed me how to make my gore even gorier. I love it. I love it. Well, once again, to us in the special effects business, uh, it's a big part of our lives. Absolutely. It's a big part of our lives. Absolutely. I want to talk to you a little bit about this sculpture. Um, Tell us about, uh, well, once again, this is just 40 hours of work, everybody, and he's nailed this likeness. I love this. The class is ending tonight, but he's going to take this home and continue to uh, detail, put his signature on the back, we'll flesh out the hair, and you're going to mold it? I am. We are gonna, I'm going to mold it, and we're going to make a, make a silicone likeness of this uh, to be displayed for everybody to enjoy and appreciate and pay homage to. To Herschel Glenn Lewis. Yeah, well, absolutely. I love it. See, with our heroes mm -hmm. like Dick Smith, Rick Baker, uh, Rob Bottin, uh, they show us the path. Yeah, absolutely. They give us the inspiration and they give us the uh, agenda. What do I do next? Where do I go? Well, we tend to emulate our heroes. And, and make, one of the amazing mm -hmm. things this man did for so many people was he so freely gave yeah. to others. Sure. You know, just like these amazing secrets and yeah. amazing, an amazing lifestyle of how to relish and enjoy filmmaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. High escapism, and it's funny because my mother, my family, not my mother, my family had a problem with all the blood when I was a child and I was staging blood gags. And I tried to express this, that uh, it wasn't just an obsession with blood. My mother called my father and said, he's doing a blood dance. Why does he call me Judas? Um, it was the staging of an intense moment of death. And even though that's tragic and horrible, you can find things that are sublime. You can find things that are poetic and beauty in that kind of It's still high, media. it's still very much high art. It is, it very really is. And it's hard to express because yeah. it's, uh, but it, I think it taps into our fear of death. Uh, I think it's a, a, like all people say about monster movies, there's a rehearsal of death. You don't have to die yourself, but uh, there certainly is poetry. And you look at the films of Sam Peckinpah and the Blood Ballet. Um, uh, you see uh, the society and the culture uh, having these wonderful, wonderful films of, of, uh, of gore. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, for us, it's a fascination with creating those sublime moments, but it's also the mechanical aspects of trying to uh, take away skin where you can't on an actor, to arrange your blood tubes or your, your uh, uh, gunshot uh, effect so that it, it moves people. Uh, the technical aspects of achieving gore uh, uh, can be wonderful. Yeah, Absolutely, it's like a, a, a new adventure each time with a, with a new face, a new actor, you know, creating the illusion. Absolutely, absolutely. I love it. Well, this was Wed Clay. You know, once again, uh, I, well, I want to ask you, what was difficult about your week? What was easy about it? Well, I just want to first start off by saying this: this could not be possible without Don's 
beautiful and amazing direction and, and teaching. Uh, and some of the amazing things I learned this week were uh, being able to create a very professional looking finished piece. Uh, the, one of the most difficult parts of it were the eyes, I'm going to say. And, the eyes were but, difficult. Yeah. And, and Don, but, but, but Don was so, so gracefully showed me how to attack it as if we were putting together a puzzle. And it made, it much, easier, yeah, it made yeah. it much easier uh, to digest the information you're giving me in small bites. Yeah. How to make the lids, how to make the bags, how to put texture on this, right. how to make it all look as if it were part of one entity with muscle, with uh, skin flowing over the cheekbones and whatnot. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, it was your hard work. You didn't stop, not five minutes. The whole week, it was like this. I love it. And anyways, needless to say, I could go on about this for hours, but I had so much fun working with you. Thank you, Don. It was yes, an sir. honor and privilege. Yes, sir. We can't wait to see what's coming up for you. Uh, tell us, I know that you have your own shop and your own interest. Uh, go ahead and look in here and tell us about uh, what's coming up for you okay. next. All right. Well, right now, my partner, Steven Escobar, and I are uh, getting ready to create the sequel to a movie that was just released last year that we produced called Xenophobia. We're making Xenophobia Part 2. It's uh, Xenophobia 1 was actually the very first ever alien abduction anthology movie. So if you like like Star Wars, like the Canteen Aliens, right. and you like alien abduction and sci-fi stuff, you'll love this film. And we're getting ready to produce the sequel to that. Also, I have a whole bunch of like crazy big monster movies coming out this year. Right. Um, under non-disclosure, so I can't give out any titles. Sure, sure. But uh, if you want, you can come to my Facebook page, Great. which is uh, facebook.com backslash joe.caspro. I post all my work on my page. Uh, you know, Wonderful. give me a give me a friend request, but more importantly, uh, give me a, a direct message to say hello. Let's start a conversation. Let's make a movie. Wonderful. Yeah. Let, let me have you say that one more time, quite loudly. Okay. Right for the camera. So uh, it's uh, my my Facebook address is facebook.com backslash Joe Castro and give me a friend request, but more importantly, give me a direct message and say hello. Let's make a movie. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you again, my friend. Everybody, thank you for your support out there, and thank you for the encouragement for our, our young artists, uh, both pro, uh, professional and beginners. Uh, we have a class coming up next month, and I'll post some information about that. I am planning a class also for Monster Palooza, uh, the week after Monster Palooza in April, and that's a very special thing. If you're going to be in town for Monster Palooza and you feel like making a monster of your own, I want you to come and join me for the week after Monster Palooza. But uh, once again, it's been a wonderful week. And we thank you for, for uh, spending some time with us. Have a happy weekend. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>